Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn how we can implement an ERC-20 Flash Mint standard. So this is an ERC-20 contract, which means it's following the standards for a fungible token, commonly a coin. And it is the Flash Mint extension, which means it can allow for Flash Minting and Flash Loans. So we're going to take the contract from Open Zeppelin and implement it. So whenever you choose a file to start from at Open Zeppelin, you have to check the file. Is the contract abstract or is it concrete? If the contract is abstract, it means you have to create a child of the contract that is concrete, that implements all of the functions that haven't been implemented from the parent. If the contract is concrete, if it doesn't have the abstract keyword, that means the contract is ready for deployment. So in this case, the ERC-20 Flash Mint is abstract, which means we have to create a child of the contract if we want to deploy our own ERC-20 Flash Mint. So let's go and bring this file over onto Remix. So we're going to test out our project at Remix. For that, I'm going to go into Remix and create a new file. I'm going to call this my Flash Mint Child file. Inside of this file, I'm going to start a regular Solidity file. So at the top, I have to put in the license with SPDX license identifier. So you can give your file a license like MIT. This is what every Solidity file expects. All right, so there we have our license defined. Next up, we're going to add the version of Solidity. So we can say Pragma Solidity. And we're going to use 0 0.8.0. Why? Because that is what is from ERC20 Flash Mint.Solidity. So I'm just matching what they wrote. So this means you have to have at least version 0 0.8.0 of Solidity. All right, our next step, we have to create a child of ERC20 Flash Mint. So we can create a contract that is called Flash Mint Child. And we can say that it is an ERC20 Flash Mint, which means it is a child of that parent. But if you try to compile this, it will give you an error that says identifier not found or not unique because in order to use this file, ERC20 Flash Mint, you have to import it. So I'm going to import at the top of the file, the file. So you have to first reference Open Zeppelin and then contracts, and you have to find where this file exists. So if you go back, you can see it exists inside of Open Zeppelin, contracts, token, and then ERC20 extensions. So we have to add that all in. So we go into contract slash token slash ERC20 slash extensions. And then we can use ERC20 Flash Mint. So you have to reference the file where it exists. All right. So if you put in the correct location, then you'll be able to use this file. Our next error message is that the contract Flash Mint child should be marked as abstract. That's because currently we're trying to make a concrete child because we can only deploy concrete contracts. But for this contract to be concrete, we have to go one step further. We have to implement everything that an abstract contract has not implemented. So how do we know what the contract, the parent, has not implemented? Well, if you look in the error message, you can get some help, right? So you can just hover over the little red symbol. And then here, you can see relevant source part starts here and spans across multiple lines. The missing implementation is from Open Zeppelin contracts slash token slash ERC20 slash ERC20 dot solidity. So this tells me that I'm missing some implementation that's required by ERC20 dot solidity. Why? Well, because ERC20 flash mint, it is a child of ERC20. And it uses the interface IERC3156 Flash Lender. So this is for the flash minting. And then ERC20 is just for the regular fungible token. 
So this tells me that something in my grandparent, which is the parent of ERC20 flash mint, meaning it's the grandparent of flash mint child, something in this ERC20 grandparent has to be implemented. And ERC20, that is inside of this file, erc20.solidity. And this file, you can see it's a contract ERC20. And yes, this is concrete, but the child here, the abstract contract is abstract. So we can read the error message further. It tells us that the missing implementation is something that has to be implemented from ERC20.solidity. And it actually gives us the line, line 54. And it even tells us the relevant source part. So the relevant source part starts here at line 54 with the constructor. So this tells me we haven't implemented the constructor and we have to do that. So the error message tells me exactly what I need to fill in. So inside of my contract, I have to fill in the constructor for ERC20. Because if you look at ERC20 flash mint, you see there's no constructor. I can search for constructor, but there actually is no constructor in this abstract contract ERC20 flash mint. At least not one that we can see. All right, so there is one in ERC20.solidity. So we go to that file because remember that's where we're missing the implementation and we can search for the constructor here. All right, and there is the constructor. Remember the constructor is called whenever a contract is deployed. So here is the constructor. You can see that it sets the value for the coin name and symbol and the default for decimals, but you can overload that if you want to change the number of decimals. So this is the constructor that is the ERC20 constructor and Remix told us that we have to implement this constructor. So we have to do exactly what Remix says. So if you copy this constructor and just bring it over, it's not quite enough because we're not just implementing the constructor that's exactly the same as ERC20. We're implementing the constructor for our contract, the Flash Mint child, which means we have to create our own constructor and then we have to send the data to the parent constructor. So this constructor that I copied and pasted it over, this is my grandparents constructor. This is the ERC20 constructor, but it doesn't work for my grandchild, my Flash Mint child. I have to build my own constructor. Here, I have to pass in everything that the parents or the grandparents might require. In this case, the name and the symbol. So this part stays the same, but you could add more. If your grandchild wanted to take in its own new data, you could add that. So you could add in another string if you wanted to. For our purposes, we'll just keep this simple. But then we have to make a call to the parent or the grandparent, whichever ones are required. In this case, just the ERC20. So we have to make a call to ERC20, which is the grandparent that we saw in our error message. Remember, if we take a look at our error message, we can see we have to implement ERC20. If you take a look at that original error message, it says we have to implement the constructor for ERC20. So that's how I know what I have to do. That's how I know that I have to build a constructor and then also call the ERC20, which is one of my ancestors. And as well, you have to pass in the data that any ancestor requires. So if ERC20 requires a name and a symbol, I have to send that to the ancestors. So that's why in my Flash Mint child, I have to build my own constructor for the child and then pass in whatever data I'd like, but I also have to pass in the data that all the ancestors require. In this case, just one ancestor ERC20. So I'm going to send the name and the symbol to the ERC20 because that's what it requires. The ERC20 ancestor requires the name and the symbol. We saw that in its code. So you can send it the name and the symbol just like so. So now we can remove this constructor that we copied. That was just for purposes of checking. So now our file compiles. So we have a constructor. This is our Flash Mint child's constructor. This constructor will be called when we deploy the Flash Mint child. But it takes in a name and a symbol. Why? Because the ERC20 needs a name and a symbol. If we had another ancestor like 
something like dog ERC. Just a really random one. If the dog ERC also had a constructor that required some extra parameter like a string memory of bark, well, in that case, we'd have to send bark to the dog ERC as well. We'd have to send bark to the dog. So any ancestor that needs a constructor filled in with data, we have to send them that data in their lineage, so in their child or their grandchild. So that's why I have to send the name and the symbol to ERC20. Now, once all your error messages are gone, that means you've successfully implemented ERC20 Flash Mint or whatever Solidity file you're trying to implement from the Open Zeppelin library or any library. So if I compile with Command S or just hitting Compile, then I have no more error messages. So this tells me I have built out an implementation. So the implementation is just taking an abstract contract and making a concrete child. And to do that, you have to fill in everything that the ancestors require. In this case, our ancestors required that we built a constructor that sent a name and a symbol to the ERC20 ancestor. All right, so now we can go to deployments and we can deploy our Flash Mint child. So make sure you select the Flash Mint child and you can see the constructor requires that you send a name and a symbol if you want to deploy this child. So we have to pass in a name and a symbol. So we can call this my coin and then the symbol MC. Then we can hit transact and look at that. Now our child is deployed and look at that. It has a bunch of variables and functions. Why? Because Flash Mint child gets everything from ERC20 Flash Mint. So everything that ERC20 Flash Mint has, it was given to its child. And remember, ERC20 Flash Mint, if we go back to it on Open Zeppelin, we can see that it gets everything from ERC20 and it also uses an interface. As well, it has all of its own functionality like max flash loan, flash fee. So the child of ERC20 Flash Mint gets everything that ERC20 has and everything that ERC20 can use or inherit. So just like that, we've been able to create an implementation of a Flash Mint.